Today, I'll show you how to add facial hair in Affinity Photo. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link for this image in the video description. The technique that I'll show you today is very useful for filling in patchy areas of a beard. But you could also use this technique to create facial hair from scratch, or to fill in the hairline of your subjects. Let's start off this project by doing some cleanup. To make the beard look more full and clean, I want to remove a few of the stray hairs that I see. So to do that, I'll add a new pixel layer. Then I'm going to select the In Painting Brush tool. Make sure to change it to Current Layer and Below, and then you can go ahead and paint away any of the imperfections that you see. Now that I've finished with that, you can see the before, and here's the after. With that finished, our next step is creating a custom brush. Now, this might sound intimidating, but it's actually pretty simple and very useful. So let's begin. Start by adding a new pixel layer. We'll use this layer to create our brush. Then go ahead and select the paintbrush tool. And I'm going to increase the flow all the way, and I'm going to move the hardness up to around 80%. Then make sure that you're painting in black. I'm going to make my brush smaller by using the bracket keys on my keyboard, and I want this to be about as small as the hairs on his face, so I'm bringing mine to around one pixel of width. Then go ahead and zoom in. You can see that these beard hairs aren't just straight lines. They all have a little bit of a curve to them. So I'm going to try to create a similar curve. I think that looks pretty good. So now that I have my single strand of hair, I'm going to turn this into a paintbrush. To do that, first I'm going to make sure my pixel layer is selected, then I'll press Command or Control C to copy it. Then I'm going to go to the top of the screen to File, then I'll press New. For our new document, I'm going to make sure that it's 50 by 50 pixels. Then I'll press Create. In this new document, I'm going to paste in that hair that we painted by pressing Command or Control V. Anytime that you're creating a custom brush, you want to make sure that your brush stroke is black and it's on a white background like this. So this looks perfect. I'm going to go ahead and save this. So I'll go up to File, then Export. I'll export this, and I'll go ahead and name this Hair. Then I'll save it. So now that we have that file saved, all we need to do to load it as a new brush is return to our other document. Then up here in the Brushes tab, go to this button right here to open the drop-down menu, and then press New Intensity Brush. Now we can go to any file that we want and turn it into a brush. I have my hair file here, so I'll select that. And you can see right here in our brushes panel, we now have our hair brush. I'll click on this brush to select it, and then we can paint with it. You can see that right now our brush looks very uniform. If I were to fill in his beard hairs with this brush, it'd be pretty obvious where I'm painting. To fix this, I'm going to customize this brush. To do that, double click on the brush. Then we get this nice dialog box that we can change some settings in. The first thing I'm going to change is the spacing. I think these hairs are way too close together. So I'm just going to drag this up to around 40%. Then I'm going to go to Dynamics. In Dynamics, you can get a lot more variety. So to start, I'm going to increase the size jitter. And now you can see that some of the hairs are smaller than others. Right now, it's set to Pressure, 
which means the harder I press down on my tablet, the smaller or larger the hair will be. But I'm going to change this to random so that no matter how hard or soft I'm painting, the hairs will all be different. I'm going to continue to change some of these settings by changing the flow and the rotation. I'll change the scatter X and the scatter Y. And I'm just going to double check that all of these that I changed say random. And I think that looks pretty good. We now have a very random looking brush. I'll close out of this and then we can go ahead and test our new brush. That looks very random and very similar to how his hairs here in his beard look. I'm going to delete this practice layer. And then I'm going to add a new pixel layer that we can paint on. And now that we have our brush set, we can go ahead and paint in the beard. So right now my color is set to black. I want to change it to colors that we see in his beard already. So I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and click right here in his beard to get this nice dark color. And now that that color is applied to my paintbrush, I'm going to go ahead and paint to fill in the hairs of the beard. After painting a bit with this darker color, I'm going to go to a lighter color. I'll hold down Alt or Option and click again. And then I'll paint with this lighter color to add variety to the hairs. I'll do this again with a lighter color. And feel free to adjust your brush size as you paint to add longer or shorter hairs into the mix. With that looking pretty good, I'm going to end by doing a very bright color to add a bit of highlight to the beard. So I'm actually going to go ahead and select a white gray color. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paint this. And I think that doesn't look very good. It's a little too obvious. So I'll press command or control Z to undo that. And I'm going to lower the flow quite a bit and then just subtly introduce some of these white hairs. Now you can see the before and the after of what we've added so far. Now, I don't think this looks very realistic yet. We have a few more steps that will really make this look more real. The first step is adding a blur to these hairs. They look very sharp right now and don't really blend into his face. So I'm going to make sure I still have that layer selected. Then I'll go to our filters and add a Gaussian blur. As I bring this up, you can see how much more blurry those hairs look. I think I'm going to bring mine up to around 0.3 pixels. The next thing I want to do is I want to darken the area that the beard is in. The darker this looks, the more contrasted it will look with the skin around it. So I'm going to go to our adjustments and add a curves adjustment. Then I'll darken this. Now I only want this applied to the beard, so I'm going to invert this layer with Command or Control I. So now that layer is black, and if I paint in white, I'll be able to apply this darkness. Now you need to remember that your brush right now is set to this beard hair brush. If you try painting right now, the darkness won't show up right. So make sure that you select a different brush. I'll just choose this one. And then I'm going to adjust the brush settings. I'll lower the flow and make sure that it's 0% hardness. And now I can go ahead and paint in white over the beard to add that darkness. So going back to my colors, I'll make sure my color is pure white. And now I can go ahead and paint this in. To me, this looks a little too dark. So I'll double click and I'm just going to brighten this a little bit. And here's the before and after. I'm also going to double click on the Gaussian blur filter. I think I made the hairs a little too blurry, so I'll just bring it down to 0.2 pixels. 
And with that, I'll go ahead and select all of our layers by holding down shift and clicking on the last one. And now you can see the complete before and after. I love how this effect turned out. It was pretty simple to do and very effective. If you want to learn more affinity tricks, be sure to check out my free course in the video description where you'll learn 10 simple steps to make any photo amazing. Thanks for watching my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.